Today we'll talk about how to select the relevant case notes and exclude the irrelevant ones. Before we get started, let's talk about the writing subtest timing. At the beginning of your test, you will receive two papers. The first one is the task and the second one, answer booklet. In the first five minutes, you are allowed to read only. Don't use your pencil. Don't you write or underline anything in the first five minutes. After that, in the next 40 minutes, you can start using your pencil and highlight or underline or write uh, brief notes on that task and then start writing your letter. Uh, in OET writing, you have to write a letter. The letter could be referral letter from GP to specialist or discharge letter from specialist to GP or transfer letter from specialist to specialist or update or information letter from specialist to GP. And there are other varieties of letter types in OET, but these are the most common uh, types. Writing assessment criteria for today's session, you want to highlight on content and conciseness and clarity. Regarding the content, consider necessary information or what does the reader need to know? So you have to consider the accuracy of information while writing. The content criterion examines a number of aspects of the content. All key information is included and information is accurately represented. The writing needs to be appropriate to the reader and their knowledge of the case and what they need to know to continue care. This is regarding the content criterion. While conciseness and clarity considers irrelevant information, what doesn't the reader need to know? Considers how effectively the case is summarized, so no time is wasted. Health professionals value concise and clear communication, and this criterion therefore also considers whether unnecessary information from the notes is included and how distracting this may be to the reader. Does this affect clarity? Is there any information that could be left out? And how well the information or the case is summarized and how clearly this summary is presented to the reader. So in brief, you have to include only the important information in your writing and exclude or omit the irrelevant or unnecessary information. So let's start with selecting relevant case notes. Before selecting the relevant case notes or excluding the irrelevant ones, you should ask the first question, who's the person you are writing for? Or who is the recipient? The, another question or the next question, does the recipient know the person you are writing about? or another meaning, does the recipient knows the, know the, the patient? So we have two important questions before we start writing. Who's the recipient? And is this recipient know the patient or the person we are writing about? Okay. This is the task. And at the beginning of your exam, in the first five minutes, as you are not allowed to write or underline or highlight anything, you have to briefly read the task. This is the writing task. You have to read the task briefly, just to know the type of letter you should write. It's a letter of referral. And this letter, is addressed for Dr. Jason Roberts and the address Newtown Hospital, 
111 High Street in Newtown. And remember, in the first five minutes, you will not um, highlight or underline or write anything. I'm highlighting just to um, follow me while talking. And the patient details and hall, Ms. And this is the date of birth. And these are the list of information like social history, substance intake, allergy, family history, then previous medical history, and the visits. And here the plan. Actually, the plan or the last visit or today's visit are the most important data you have to know before selecting or before starting selecting or excluding the case notes whether relevant or irrelevant or even semi-relevant. So in the first five minutes, read the task briefly to know you are addressing this letter to a specific person with the type of letter. After that, back to the plan and the last visit, then go from the beginning downward. So this is the sequence while reading. And even after uh, the first five minutes and at the beginning of the next 40 minutes, also you should repeat this cycle again to start highlighting and excluding the relevant and irrelevant data. So again, first of all, read the writing task. Then read the patient details. Then read the plan or the last visit, then start reading after the patient details, starting from social history to the last visit. Okay. The sequence, sir, can repeat again, sir, please. Okay. The no yeah, please, for me also. Thank okay. you. At the beginning of the first five minutes, and even after the, these five minutes, at the beginning of the next uh, 40 minutes, you have to start reading this writing task at first. To know the address and the recipient of your letter and the type of the letter. So here we have a referral letter and the recipient is Dr. Jason Reports, and this is the address. And also here, the specialty gastroenterologist. So this is the task. And patient details or the person we are going to write about, Anne Hall, Ms. Anne Hall. And we have discussed earlier that Ms. means that it's an, a, a title for a female, adult female, and we don't know whether this female married or unmarried. Ms. with the abbreviation uh, MS, Ms., not Miss. Female, married or unmarried, we don't know. And this is the date of birth. Uh, this is uh, regarding the height, uh, weight, uh, rest of that regarding the patient details. So this is the second step we have to do. After that, don't start reading this, no. You have to go back for the plan, refer gastroenterologist for opinion and endoscopy if required, and 
recommend or advise your patient to decrease coffee intake and decrease alcohol intake and cease or stop the over-the-counter product and prescribe pantoprazole 40 milligram daily. So this is the plan. This is the last visit. So we have to read the plan or the last visit. Here, the last visit presenting complaint, dysphagia, and this is the duration and concomitant disease urinary tract infection. And this is the over-counter uh, product intake, uh, concomitant epigastric pain, recent increase in coffee consumption, and takes aspirin, blah, blah, blah. Provisional diagnosis, gastroesophageal uh, gastro reflux, and structure, plus or minus structure. While reading the plan and the last visit or the presenting complaint, you will know the importance of coming data or coming uh, case notes. Because if you didn't read this first and went to start from here to here without knowing the value or the goal of your writing, you will consume time and you will lose um, precious minutes without doing anything with uh, benefits. So again, read the writing task, read the patient details, read the plan and the last visit or the presenting complaint to know the case of this patient and what you have to do for this patient and what's the, the important information you have to include in your writing. So you'll know the uh, provisional diagnosis and the symptoms in the past and drugs uh, had been taken. So you have to know these information before selecting the relevant or relevant case notes. Is it clear, Dr. Erin, right now, uh, till now? Yes, sir. Uh, it's clear, but there are some later. There's a lot of uh, visits. So it was also how should compromise those visits, like uh, many parts of the visit. And uh, how can I uh, understand it is the last uh, visit of the letter? OK, Dr. Erin. Are you asking about uh, if the letter um, has lots of visits? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lots okay, no problem. Visits. This is regarding the date. You you have to look to the date. Like in this example. Okay. This example, we have yes, uh, here a visit in December, and this is another uh, visit at the beginning of. Uh, January and yeah. after a week and after almost 18 days and yeah. after six days. Yeah. So you have to look at the last yeah. visit. This is the last visit. Yeah. Pathology uh, report reviewed Mrs. Uh, Sharma fasting uh, sugar uh, usually above 16, other blood sugar within normal, refer to a specialist at diabetes unit for further management of her sugar level. So you will know easily that this letter talking about a diabetic patient and you want to control or manage uh, his or her sugar levels. Is it right? Yes, sir, it's right. Yes, so you will, this is, will be very easy to include or exclude the data with a um, relevant or irrelevant from these case notes. Yes. 
Okay. So regarding multiple visits, uh, how should I compromise? Uh, so is it uh, so how how should I uh, exclude the irrelevant tasks? There is a lot of visits like this letter. If there is uh, there are lots of visits in a letter, so how you will uh, yeah. include? Uh, exclude the irrelevant. Yes. Exclude okay. Or don't don't worry, Doctor Aaron. Uh, let's um. Um, let's ask at the, the at the end of our session okay. today. And okay, okay. if you want, if you want, if you want to ask about okay. anything, just ask, uh, and you will easily uh, know how to manage uh, your timing, how to include, how to exclude yes, everything. Sir. Okay. Yes, Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so this is uh, the first letter we have. D. You have to to read the writing task. At the beginning, this is step one. Step two, read patient details. Step three, read the last visit or the presenting complaint, the last visit, and the plan which needed. After that, go from the start from the social history, then substance intake if included, allergies, family history, previous med medical history, and the visits in your letter. The visit could be one, two, three, five, six visits, and don't worry about that because uh, there are lots of case notes mentioned in uh, letters or in the tasks just for distracting. Okay, let's start with Dr. Dr. Abdul Muttalib. Oh, hello, hello, Dr. Sam. How are you? Fine. Okay, Dr. Abdul Muttalib. Could you read the writing task? Okay. Uh, regarding, regarding the writing task, uh, uh, using the information, in the case notes, uh, write a letter of uh, referral uh, the gastroenterologist, enterologist, Victor uh, Jason Roberts at uh, Newtown Hospital. Mm -hmm. So, in your answer, okay. Through this writing task, as it mentioned yeah. that Dr. Jason Roberts does know this patient. No, 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 I did no, it, it is it, mm, no, not, this is not included in the task that yeah. the doctor we are referring to is no, uh, whether knows the patient or not. So, yeah, Dr. Jason doesn't know the patient we are talking about. Yeah, okay. And we knew that the recipient is Dr. Jason Probos, and he is an, yeah. he's a gastroenterologist yeah. working in Newtown Hospital, and this is the address. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. After that, what will you do after reading that writing task? Yeah, after that, uh, we can go to the patient uh, personal data or Patient details. Yes, just to know the name of your patient. Yeah. And date of birth. Yeah. And stop at here. Okay. Why? Yeah. Why did you go to read the patient details? Because if you, in the at the yeah. beginning of your writing, you have to write the layout or the letter format. And a letter yeah, format, yeah. you have to include the address, the name of the recipient, and the address, yeah. then the date, yeah. then the salutation, then the subject, yeah. then the introduction, body paragraph one, body paragraph two, and conclusion, then closing and signature. So here, you have to write the 
patient's name and date of birth. Yeah. That's why you have to read patient's details. Yeah. Okay. Um, excuse me, doctor. Okay. These divisions uh, you talk about now, it's available in previous session? Oh, yeah, yeah of course, in the uh, letter format. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. There is a complete session uh, regarding how to write uh, letter format. Uh -huh. It's recorded, right? Yeah, it's record recorded, and I have attached uh, a PDF uh, folder for the uh, layout for British and American. Okay, thanks. thanks. Okay. Okay, Dr. Al-Muttal, let's continue. Yes. Uh, after reading the uh, writing task and the patient details, what would you yeah. want to do after that? Then, then uh, we can shift to to last visits or uh, yes. history of the presenting illness or the presenting complaint. Yes, and the plan. Together, together with plan. plan okay. Treatment. Could you read the last visit? Mm. Uh, presenting complaints, dysphagia uh, mm -hmm. for solids, two weeks. Uh -huh. Two weeks post viral, and we know the the causative uh, viral. Self medicated with a. Okay. Over the counter. After that, over yeah. the counter Chinese herbal product yeah. OTC. that contains uh, unknown, OTC. then no relapse. I'm asking. Uh, I'm remittent course. After that, no sensation of lump, no obvious anxiety. And Concomitant epigastric pain radiating to the back at level T12 and weight loss one to two kilograms. And recent increase in coffee consumption and takes aspirin occasionally two to three times per month and no other non-steroidal. I'm coming back because of uh... Internet uh, interruption, yeah. Uh -huh, okay. Okay, Dr. Then uh, yeah. the provisional diagnosis is gastroesophageal reflux plus or minus structure. Yeah. And the plan refer, mm, refer to mm, gastroenterologist uh, mm, for opinion and, and endoscopy, endoscopy if required. If required, yeah. Uh -huh. And decrease. Coffee intake alcohol. Yes, uh, you have to advise your patient to decrease intake of alcohol yeah. and uh, coffee and stop yeah. taking the uh, over the counter products or medications yeah. and yeah. prescribe yeah. Pantu, pantubrazor, pantubrazor 14 mg yeah. daily. Okay. Yeah. What's the importance of these? of this data after reading it? I think all of this information is relevant. Okay. Then information to the patient. What's, what's the case of your patient? My case is This patient, this patient had dysphagia and Pain, yeah. the gastric pain, radiant to the back, and is taking aspirin and over the yeah. counter uh, products. And the provisional diagnosis is gastroesophageal reflux plus or minus structure. Yeah. Okay, so let's start yeah. with social history. Social history. The occupation of yeah. this patient, is it important patient is, 
for uh, the gastroenterologist or not? Mm, I think it is important. Okay. Because his, uh, his job is as teacher, uh, still is as a risk factor. Yes, great. Like great. And uh, whether divorced or married or widower, so what's the importance of this? Do you see that this is important for a gastroenterologist? Mm. Uh, I think uh, social history is important, yeah, because it is a tr triggering factor for uh, gastrointestinal reflux. Okay, but divorced and have children. Blah, blah, blah. Is it important for this case? It is the important purpose, just... The, the purpose of your letter, the purpose yeah. of your letter is yeah. to write a referral letter to yeah. gastroenterologist to... Yeah. ...ask for the definitive diagnosis and whether this patient needs uh, endoscopy or not. So do you think that divorced or whether the patient has three, two, four children. Is it important in our case or not? Mm, it is not important. Not important. What about yeah. smoking? Is it important? Mm, smoking is important. Yeah. Yes, of course it's important. Why smoking yeah. is important? Because it is a risk factor of uh, gastric ulcer disease or gastric uh, severe reflux so, disorder. Yes, so uh, smoking is a risk factor for lots of uh, pathological conditions. So we have to include this in our writing. What about taking alcohol? Is it important or not? Hello? Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam. Is this me? Uh, Dr. Ibtihal. Uh, just <laughs> my kid is changing the name. Ah, uh, uh, okay, Dr. Ibtihal. Yes. I just want to ask uh, regarding the purpose of the uh, referring letter. Um, we have included the plan uh, and the uh, last visit. Uh, but it's, there is too many details in the last visit. Um, do you think we have to just to mention the most important things in the, uh, the introductory uh, paragraph of the letter that uh, I, I mean the purpose? Mm -hmm. Like uh, we're referring this patient, uh, what's the name? Um, Anne Hall. Uh, date of birth like this, and we are referring this patient uh, who presented with dysphagia for solid uh, so and so, and we don't need to mention all this uh, presenting history and the papers. Yes, of course. We just read this to know how uh, wh what's the important data or uh, the unnecessary data, uh, but. If you are talking about the introduction, how to write the introduction, of course, you will not write all these data. Okay. You will just write uh, or highlight that this per person uh, had a possible gastroesophageal reflux, and we want uh, your assistant okay. regarding uh, the definitive diagnosis or management, and uh, if he wants uh, investigations, blah, 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 or not. And you have not to include all these data. Okay. And just here we are uh, pointing out the most relevant case notes. Mm. Uh, we just started reading this at first just to know the most important the most important data here yeah. and to know the case, the case or the presenting uh, complaint and the medications uh, the patient had. So if you didn't read this and started reading this, 
you will not know or you will not be able to know uh, what's the uh, relevant information or the irrelevant till you read this. Okay. Okay. So we have to uh, go point by point for the most recent uh, visit mm -hmm. and the plan, and then go backward to the other uh, yes. points. Okay. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, how are you? Assalamu uh, alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Just I have one, but I can uh, answer, inshallah. Dr. Ahmed, again, please. What's the first step? Uh, I will uh, read the writing task using the information in the case note, write a referral letter, mm -hmm. uh, write a referral for further investigation and a definitive uh, diagnosis to gastroenterologist Dr. Uh, Roberts at Newtown Hospital, blah, 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 the uh, address. Okay. Then after that? After that, um, I will start. After that, I will read the relevant and the relevant letter. I will write the patient in detail in the form of his name, uh, date of birth. Mm -hmm. uh, the name and date of birth, and this is the uh, recipient and his address. And this is okay. the type of our letter today. Okay. okay. After after that, what will you do? After that, mm -hmm. I, will, I will write the address of the recipient first, and uh, after that, I will make the salutation. Uh, no, no the... I'm not talking about the layout. We skipped that. We are starting from uh, the introduction till the conclusion. How to include the relevant data and how to exclude the irrelevant data. So how can you choose the important uh, uh, data here? I will, read all, uh, I will read all the visits, and after that, I will decide the relevant or irrelevant to that. Um, okay. Do you know uh, your patient's case through just reading this and this? Okay, using the information. Is it, is it enough for you? Is it enough to read this no, and no, this? No. Is not to start excluding and including the relevant or relevant data, or you should have to know what's the case and what you have to do. Uh, I should know uh, what is the case and uh, what I so have to do. You have to know the presenting complaint and oh. the needed plan. Is that right? Yes. So please start reading from here, and after you know, after knowing these or this data start choosing or selecting the relevant data okay briefly just to help you the presented complaint is dysphagia the onset oh, two weeks ago and concomitant uh, another con condition urinary tract infection caused by uh, viral and we don't know the which viral uh, and it's self-medicated -medi with over-the-counter Chinese herbal product and the content, we don't know the content. Uh, the course of this condition was constant, no relapse, no relapse and remittent course, uh, no sensation of lump, no obvious anxiety, uh, another concomitant of epigastric pain. So this dysphagia, is concomitant with epigastric pain, and this pain is radiating to back to level T12, and there is uh, weight loss, one to two kilograms, and recent increase in coffee intake by the patient, and also the patient takes aspirin occasionally two to three times monthly. No other non-steroidal uh, taken, okay, or intake. And the professional diagnosis is gastroesophageal reflux plus or minus structure. And the plan is refer gastroenterologist for opinion and endoscopy if required. And advise your patient to decrease coffee intake and decrease alcohol intake and stop taking over the counter product. 
and prescribe pantoprazole 40 milligram daily. Okay. So by this inf by this information, it's very easy to know your patient's case and what will you have to do right now. Okay. So start with social history, please. Uh, from this data, physical data, uh, the height, is it important to us to know the height of this patient or not? It is not important, the height. Okay. BMI is important, weight not important. BMI okay. important. So let's highlight or, or let's uh, exclude the irrelevant data. The height, is it important? Not important. Important. What about the weight? Is it important to know the weight? Semi relevant, I think. Semi relevant. Um, actually, in this case, you are talking about gastroesophageal reflux. Oh. Okay, it is re uh, relevant. Relevant. Of course, Related. it's relevant. Yes. And what about the occupation, in the social history? Teacher, not is it irrelevant. important? Not irrelevant. I think it is not irrelevant. No, it's it's relevant because, uh, yes, yeah, Dr. Ahmed. Stress, not stress. There is no stress. Okay, uh, because of stress, yes. Oh, okay. And uh, another thing regarding this condition. The doctor you are referring to, which is Dr. Jason Roberts, uh, he will need to know the uh, nature of, of your patient's occupation, and that will be considered in uh, the management of this patient. So, of course, we will include the occupation here. What about uh, divorced and has two children at home born 2002-2004? Uh, Is it important? Uh, I think divorced and uh, important, important is the social history regarding the social history. It is a stressful condition also. Okay, divorced. But what about two children at home? Blah blah blah. No, is it important? Irrelevant. 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 Yeah. Yes. So here we have a partial relevant note or case note. So we can include divorced only, and also you can uh, exclude this, but uh, let's consider that this uh, information is important to us. What about the smoking? Is it important or not? Important. Okay. And social drink, drinker. A drinker. Also important. Yes. Also important. Why? Why smoking and alcohol intake are important? Mm -hmm. Because uh, they are risk factors for uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease and uh, another another medical conditions. Lots of medical condition caused by uh, under the effect of smoking and drinking. Is it right? Right. Okay. What about substance intake? Nil. Is it important to in, uh, mention that this patient didn't take uh, blah blah blah? No, no, it is not important. Just exclude this. What about the allergy? We have codeine allergy, dust mice allergy, sulfur dioxide allergy. And your patient is an internal medical, an internal medicine case, the digestive system, gastroenterologist, yeah. and the progenitors gastroesophageal reflux. Which one of these you could mention and will be helpful or should be considered in our management. Codeine, codeine, sulfur dioxide, codeine. 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 Yes. And you can exclude the, the That's the white uh, yeah. Uh -huh. What about family history? The mother has or had hypertension and asthmatic, while father peptic ulcer, which is important. Father uh, has peptic ulcer, it is important. Yes, and we can exclude the rest. Is it right? Right. What about maternal grandmother history? Died from heart attack at age 80. Not important. important. 
not important. What about what about maternal grandfather died from asthma attack? Is it important? Not important. Not important. Paternal grandmother unknown. Is it important to mention this information? Not important. Not important. What about paternal grandfather died at old age because of senility? Is it important? Not important. Not important. Let's go to previous medical history. Childhood asthma and chickenpox and measles. Is it important to mention these past medical history? Not important. Also. Not important. What about tonsillectomy on uh, in 1983? Is it important? Not important. 1990, hepatitis A, whole family is infected, and after two years, sub special cyst removal. Is it important? Not important. Nineteen ninety-five, whiplash injury, or an injury in the work. Is it important? Not important. Two thousand six, depression, separation from husband, and selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors like fluoxetine uh, taking. Is it important? Important. Why? Maybe selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Make gastric upsets. I don't know. No. Okay, you see that uh, this will be semi relevant. Semi relevant. What about depression? Depression, uh, not important. Okay. Let's consider your uh, thoughts and we will leave this as a semi relevant. What about the next one? 2008, overweight. So, weight reduction. Irrelevant. Okay, but here it's already mentioned that your patient is overweight. Okay. 2010, urinary tract infection upper uh, after upper respiratory tract infection. Not important. 2012, dyspepsia. Important. Okay. 2014, dermatitis, prescribed oral and topical corticosteroids. Important uh, oral corticosteroids. Yes. It's, the, the dermatitis by itself is not important, but because of dermatitis, the patient had uh, oral and topical Corticosteroid and that oral is the important one. Regarding the presenting complaint, dysphagia, is it important? Important. The onset of this condition two weeks ago, is it important? Important also. And this condition happened post viral urinary tract infection which is self-medicated with over-the-counter intake with a Chinese hair product. Is it important? Important. Yes. What about no relapse or remittent course? Important. Yes. Sure. What about no sensation of lump, no obvious anxiety? Is it important? Important. Why? Sensation of lump, maybe uh, it is the cause of dysphagia. Maybe mm -hmm. there is any lump in the neck cause dysphagia, like, for thyroid cancer. I don't know. Yes, you yeah. can include this. What about the next one? Concomitant epigastric pain radiating to back at level T12 weight and weight loss from 1 to 2 kilograms. Important. Recent increase in coffee consumption. Important. Why? Because coffee can cause uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease or peptic ulceration. Yes. Takes aspirin occasionally two to three times per month and no other non-steroidal. 
important. Is it important to mention all this uh, information or just exclude this and you include the aspirin only? Aspirin only. Yes. Provisional diagnosis, gastroesophageal reflux, plus or minus structure. Is it important? Important. Of course, it's important. And this is the plan. Refer gastroenterologist for opinion and endoscopy if required. And advise your patient to decrease coffee in intake and decrease alcohol intake and seize over-the-counter product and prescribe pantoprazole. And also, all these points should be included in your writing, right? Right. Okay. Let's go for the official OOT sample already written by the administration itself. Let's start reviewing the mentioned data here. This is the name of the recipient, Dr. Jason Roberts. And this is the name of the hospital. And this is the address. And after that, blank line, then the date, then blank line, then salutation. Salutation, you can write the family name of your, of your recipient. And here, the family name is Roberts. So you can write Dr. Roberts directly without mentioning Jason. Jason. So this is the salutation or greet. After that, this is the subject regarding Ms. Ain Hall and date of birth, blah, blah, blah. Then blank line. So let's start with our topic today from the introduction till the conclusion. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, could you read the introduction, please? Thank you for seeing uh, Ms. Hall. Uh, 45 year old uh, secondary school teacher who presented today with a two week history of gastroesophageal reflux with possible stretcher. I'm referring uh, Ms. Hall to you for further investigation and an endoscopy if required. Okay. So we included the name of the patient, the age, and the occupation. And you can include also uh, divorced or not. And that's why we uh, said it's uh, semi-relevant. After that, this is the purpose, starting from here till the end. We included our provisional diagnosis and the purpose of our writing. Who presented today with a two week history of gastroesophageal reflux? with possible structure. So this is the provisional diagnosis. I'm referring Ms. Hall to you for further investigation and an endoscopy if required. And this is the, also the purpose. So here, this is the provisional diagnosis or the symptoms presenting uh, with the patient at the today's visit. And here, the purpose of our writing. Okay, start reading this first paragraph, please. Ms. Hall, the symptom follow a, a constant course and include dysphagia for solid, with gastric pain, radiating posteriorly to T12 level, and the concomitant one to two kilogram uh, weight loss. The problem commented after an upper respiratory tract infection two weeks ago. For which she self prescribed an over the counter Chinese herb product with unknown ingredient. There are no apparent signs of an anxiety and no sensation of alarm. Of alarm. Okay, let's compare the mentioned data here in this official sample with our selection. Of course, at the, in the introduction, we included the patient name and date of birth and the occupation yeah. and the presenting complaint, dysphagia for two weeks. 
and the provisional diagnosis gastroesophageal reflux with a possible uh, structure. And the purpose of our writing, you are asking, or we asked the gastroenterologist for his opinion and endoscopy if required. Okay. Is it right till now? Right. Okay. Uh, in the first paragraph, Ms. Hall's symptoms follow a constant course. Of course, here we see that the progression of the course is important to know the severity of this case. So we included that the patient patient's case is uh, or the course is constant, no relapse oh. or no crisis. A constant course and include dysphagia for solid and every gastric pain radiating posteriorly to 312 yeah. and concomitant loss, weight loss, one to two kilograms. Okay. Here's the epigastric pain radiating to level 12, T12, and weight loss. And the problem commenced after an upper respiratory tract infection two weeks ago, which she self-prescribed an over-the-counter Chinese helper product with unknown ingredients. And there are no apparent signs of an anxiety and no sensation of a lump. As you said, Dr. Ahmed, that this condition started post-viral urinary tract infection and was self-medicated with over-the-counter Chinese helper product and no sensation of lump and no anxiety. After that, could you continue, Dr. Ahmed? Uh, Mrs. Hall has recently increased her coffee consumption and it takes the aspirin two to three times a month. She has a history of dysphagia, dyspepsia 2012 and dermatitis for which she was prescribed oral and topical cortisone. Okay, stop here, she please. In this letter, we started writing for the most recent visit with the most important complaint. Is it right? Right. So this is paragraph one. This is the presenting complaint or today's visit. And after that, we went back for dysphagia 2012. We mentioned that recent increase in coffee intake and takes aspirin. These are in paragraph two and can we can change the color for paragraph two. Then we mentioned dyspepsia and dermatitis with oral corticosteroids. After that, Dr. Ahmed? He says the smoking 15 years ago, she drank socially, mainly spirits, has a family history of peptic ulcer disease and is allergic to codeine. Her BMI is currently uh, 28.2. So we mentioned that the cessation of smoking at uh, 15 uh, years ago, and she drinks socially, family history of peptic ulcer, allergic to codeine, body mass index 82.2. Twenty-two, twenty-eight point two. Sorry. Uh, okay, let's go back for the 
case notes. We mentioned the allergy of cadein and family history of peptic ulcer. Mentioned social history for drinking alcohol and smoking and the body mass index. As you see, there are lots of data here. We didn't mention them in writing. We also we just only considered the important one for our case today. After that, Dr. Ahmed. I have recommended that uh, Miss Hall reduces her coffee and the alcohol intake and immediately stops taking the O2C uh, over the counter product. In addition, I have prescribed uh, bantoprazole 40 milligram daily. Okay. So here, the plan, we didn't mention the plan in our writing till the last paragraph. We recommended our patient or advised our patient to decrease alcohol and coffee intake and stop taking over-the-counter medication or products. And we prescribed pantoprazole 40 milligram per day. So here's the coffee and alcohol intake and stop in taking over-the-counter product and prescribe pantoprazole 40 milligram per day. After that, I would be grateful if you could provide Ms. Hall with a definitive diagnosis. If you require any further information, please don't hesitate to contact me. Yours is sincerely good. So this is the importance of conclusion. You have to summarize the uh, purpose or the aim of your writing in the conclusion to be very easy for your um, reader to know uh, the importance of your writing. So I would be grateful if you could provide Ms. Hall with a definitive diagnosis. This is mentioned in the plan. And if you require any further information, uh, this is just to uh, like a polite uh, style for uh, communication. After that, this is the closing and a blank line and your signature as a doctor. And you have to write just doctor, don't write your name write doctor or nurse, your profession only. Don't write your name here. Okay, uh, okay Dr. Ahmed, uh, do you think that, or do you see, or do you feel that this letter is easy to you for uh, selecting the relevant case notes and excluding the irrelevant case notes? Yes, yes, this is easy. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Um, Doctors, do you have any question regarding this, this task? No, sir, clear. Yes, Dr. Aaron. Uh, now clear, sir. Is it clear for you? Yes. Okay, great. So let's go for the next one. So let's uh, start with... Mm, okay. What's the first step you will do in uh, selecting or reading the, the task in your exam? Uh, start with the reading, uh, with the reading, like the task. Okay. Which task, yeah. Then um, a patient details, a name and date of birth. Uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Then mm -hmm. with uh, start reading the uh, the last. Okay, Dr. Anas. Um, start reading the task, please. What? What I said? Start. Uh, uh, the, yeah. Uh, you, uh, using the information and the case notes, uh, write a letter of uh, referral to Dr. Smith and the uh, endocrinologist at City Hospital. For further management of Mr. Uh, Mrs. Mr. Sham 
Mrs. 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 Dr. Lisa Smith, this is the recipient, and her specialty is endocrinologist, and she works at City Hospital in Newtown. This is the address. And uh -huh. the name of your patient is Mrs. Praya Sharma, and date of birth this date. Okay, after that, what will you do after that? Uh, after that, we have to read, uh, uh, after that, we have to read uh, the last visit. Okay. Or the presenting complaint. So, uh, here, this is the last visit, and this visit was for a pathology report review with Mrs. Sharma. And the fasting blood sugar was very high, while the non fasting blood sugars within normal range, or at least less than the fasting one. And the purpose is refer to a specialist at diabetes unit for further management of sugar levels. So it's very clear that mm -hmm. you can say that all the included information should be about a patient or a diabetic patient facing a difficulty in controlling his or her fasting blood sugar. Is it right? Yes, right. Okay. So let's start from the beginning. The address. Is it important to mention the address? Address of the patient. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, it is important. Why? It is important. Uh, you are talking about a diabetic. Uh, Why it's important to mention his address? Oh, no, no, it's not important to mention his address because the uh, doctor knows uh, the patient. Yes, uh, uh, there is no importance yeah. of uh, mentioning the address of your patient to such a uh, doctor, to Dr. Lisa. It's not important. Yeah. Okay, what about social background? Yeah. Married, 40 years, has three adult children, and... She uh, has uh, five grandchildren overseas. Is it important to mention all these? Also not important because um, uh, chronically uh, followed by doctor, uh, uh, by the specialists, which I refer. Again, sorry? It, it is not important. It is not important. So you will exclude uh, these data? Yeah. Okay. But uh, for this retired clerical worker, this is the occupation or the current status of this patient. Isn't it important to mention that this patient is retired? I think uh, I think it is immediate then. Semi-relevant, okay, we will consider that. Okay, after that, family history. After that, the family history, yeah. Uh -huh. Many uh, Yes, it is important. Type two yes, diabetes. Uh, yeah, it, it is important to mention. Yes, of course, it's important to mention that this patient has many relevance with type two diabetes. Okay, nil else significant. Is it important to mention this sentence? No. No, you will exclude this. Okay. No. Medical history. 
and uh, yes, it is important. Type 2 diabetes. So in 1999, the patient was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Is it important to mention this? Yes, it, it is important to mention. Yes, it's very important. No, st uh, no significant, no operations. Is it important? No, not important. No. Not important. Allergic to penicillin and menopause to uh, 12 years ago. Is it important? Also, it is not, also uh, not important. Allergic to not important. Wait, wait, be careful here. You here you have two um, two things: allergy to penicillin and menopause. You can menopause. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. allergy for penicillin is important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, never smoked nil alcohol. Is it important? No. No, it is not important. Okay. In your writing, if you didn't mention this point, uh, you will consider that this patient is non-smoker. So you can you can mention uh -huh. that this patient is non-smoker, or you can omit this. Uh -huh. What about? Uh -huh. What about no formal exercise? Is it important to mention that this patient? Yes, yes, sedentary, yes uh, sedentary lifestyle is important to mention. Uh, yes, we can uh, include this. Uh, current drug, the patient is taking metformin, and this is the dosage, and glibizide, and this is the dosage, and no other prescribed over-the-counter or recreational products. Of course, it is important. All these are important? Yes. Uh, the pairs two uh, yes. drugs, yes. Uh, metformin and glibizide. Ah, we can omit this. Uh -huh. After that, on uh, 29 December 2018, concerned that your patient was concerned that her glucose level are not well enough controlled and she uh, checked, went to check level often because she worried. Is it mentioned, is it important? To uh, it is important. Patient concerns uh, always uh, important to mention. Okay. Okay, doctor, uh, we have a question here. Doctor, I don't know what's the name of um, uh, admin. What's your name, please? Uh, no, uh, admin. Uh, someone wrote at uh, chat named with admin. What he's asking? Why is allergic? Is allergic to medicine is important. What's your name, please? Doctor Ahmed Al Hawari. I'm sorry. I'm working on the computer. Doctor Ahmed, with a diabetic patient, of course, diabetes will decrease the immunity of a patient. Is it right? Right. So the uh, endocrinologist might prescribe uh, an antibiotic for like uh, diabetic food or any infection in this patient. So he will. Uh, prescribe an antibiotic. So it's very important to mention that this patient is allergic to penicillin. Oh, okay. Okay. Clear? Clear. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, doctor. Uh, after that, Dr. Anas, uh, uh -huh. in the first note, uh, the task is telling you that the patient was worried and concerned about uh, the Hair glucose level. Is it important to mention this? It is important, always important to mention concerns. Yes, of course. It's concerning. Uh, attends health center, feels not taking her concerns seriously. Recent blood sugar levels uh, from 6 to 18. Is it important? Uh, semi radiant. Uh, you have to. I have no idea. This is the first one. We are talking about the high blood sugar level. So 
It is very important. Yeah, it is. It is important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and checks blood pressure at home. Yes, it is important. Mm, I think, from my point of view, I think it's uh, not important or semi relevant. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will consider that semi relevant, or I can omit this. Um, last I check, October 2017, weight steady, body mass index within normal range. Is it important? It is important uh, because annually uh, the patient uh, have to check his eyes. Yes, of course, because with diabetes. Yes, uh, diabetes may cause uh, insults in the eye. Retinopathy. Yes, Retinopathy, yeah. uh, Appetite, good. And uh, diet, good. Is it important? Uh, it is important, yeah. Uh, I think it's semi-relevant, so let's highlight it with yellow. Good diet, because uh, we use uh, diet with... Uh, to manage uh, to manage uh, diabetes. Yes, of course, but here the case notes is telling you that the appetite is good. He didn't mention anything about uh, the whether the patient is taking uh, fast food or high you. calorie food or, or 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 is it right? Yeah, I get you. I get you. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Uh, I will consider that uh, semi relevant. Uh, about bowels normal and micturition normal. Is it important? Uh, I, I think it is not important. Not important. Uh, on examination, full physical exam, non applicable or there is no important thing. Uh, blood pressure. So uh, is it important to mention this sentence? No, it, it is not important to mention. Okay. The next one, blood pressure on examination. Yeah, blood pressure is important to mention. Yeah, because um, in examination in this, not we are talking about a thing with uh, examination, not um, a thing happened or done uh, from the patient in his home. While here, a physical examination was performed. Okay. No peripheral neuropathy. Pelvic exam not performed. I think it is not important. Not important. Okay. Pathology requested full blood exam, urea, uh, urea and electrolytes, creatinine, liver function tests, full lipid profile, glygated hemoglobin, uh, medication added like canadestrone, desertan, uh, and takan, and the review after two weeks. Uh, labs, particular arm in general, uh, it is not important to mention. I don't, but uh, medica medication added, uh, it is important to mention. Yes, but uh, uh, review uh, two weeks. Yeah. Uh -huh. If there's a certain test could or might uh, affect the patient's uh, health, and especially in a diabetic patient, you should mention this. But uh, here, you requested blah, blah, blah. So you will remove this. You will not mention in your writing that you requested blah, blah, blah. But you can add this medication in your writing that um, you prescribe uh, that the, there is an, a certain medication was added and also this is referring to diabetic patient and review after two weeks is it important to mention this yeah it is it, it is not important but uh, i have a question mm -hmm. uh, uh regarding the uh, regarding the labs uh, if there is results lab um, it is important to mention or not. If there is what? Uh, regarding lab's results. 
Yes, of course. Uh, uh, yes, but uh, it, is important yes, I I said that. Is it not important important to mention that you requested blah 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 for this case, but here, for yeah, the yeah. result, you can uh, mention the important one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Let's continue. Review after two weeks isn't important. It is not important. Uh, on five, uh, 5th May 2019, pathology report re received and the first uh, full blood exam, urea and electrolytes, creatinine, liver function tests in normal range. Is it important? It is no, uh, important. Yes, here semi relevant because uh, the labs are uh, normal. Because if you didn't mention the normal uh, labs, uh, it will be considered that there is no problem with uh, these numbers. Uh, mm. uh, regarding the glomerular filtration rate above 60 milli per minute, is it important? Yes, it is important. Okay. Uh, glygated hemoglobin. Yes, of course. Lipids, cholesterol high, triglyceride within normal, low density lipoprotein, protein, and also within normal. Yes, yes, two. Is it important it, it, it to mention is... all of these? Uh, just cholesterol, I think. Yes, cholesterol, LDL. cholesterol and the glygated hemoglobin. And you can mention the glomerular filtration rate. And I think this is semi-relevant, but this one and this one important. Uh, on 12 January 2019, review of pathology results with patient change in medication recommended that metformin regimen change to another dosage and uh, atrovastatin uh, for 20 milligram and this for five milligram and he the same one here five thousand five hundred okay and review after two weeks is it important to mention this uh, yes it is important. Okay, so uh, review after two weeks. Review after two weeks, no, it is not important. We have to mention uh -huh. a metformin, okay. the dose, and yeah, of course, you have to mention this because you changed the dosage from here. Mm -hmm. Uh, on 30 January 2019, so after almost um, 22 days, no, um, 18 days, uh, home blood pressure and range sugars improved. Yeah, uh, it is important. The sugar is in. Actually, sugar uh, improved. Mm, home blood pressure and range and sugars improved. Important. Okay, let's consider it like important. What about pathology requested? Fasting lipid. Full uh, fasting and lipid uh, full profile. We mentioned that before. It is not important. Okay. After six days, pathology report received the cholesterol, triglyceride, and low density lipoprotein. It is not important. Normal ranges cholesterol, triglyceride, LDL. All of them is normal, are normal. All of them are normal. Mm. 
Mm. But be careful, the last mentioned data, you said that the cholesterol was high and then you will not mention this again. So maybe the recipient uh, considered that the patient has a high cholesterol level. So be careful here. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. It is important. Cholesterol. Uh, so we have to mention uh, uh, cholesterol level. Yes, uh, you might uh, highlight that the uh, level of cholesterol uh, um, improved. Okay. Then pathology report review with uh, Mrs. Sharma. Uh, fasting blood sugar was very high and blood sugar, other blood, blood sugars, seven to eight within normal. And this is the purpose. Is it important to mention this and this and this and this? Yes. Yes. It's very important. It's very important. Okay, let's go to see the official sample. This is the name of the recipient, Dr. Lisa Smith. This is her mm -hmm. specialty. This is the name of her hospital and this is the address. Blank line in between. Then the date of today in your writing. After that, the salutation or greeting, dear doctor and Smith, family name of the recipient, and comma here and comma here. Be careful if you want to include the comma in the greeting or in the salutation, you have to include this comma again here. But if you remove the comma from here, you have to remove the comma from here, okay? Uh, after that, subject regarding Mrs. Praya Sharma, and this is the date of birth. And it's more formal to write 1958. Don't write 50, uh, 58 alone. If you want to write more formal, you have to write more complicated regarding the date. Okay, uh, this is the introduction. Could you read the introduction loudly, please? Yes, of course. Uh, thank you for seeing Mr. Uh, Sharma, a type two diabetic. Not for further management. Uh, Dr. Anas, not Mr. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Thank you for seeing Mrs. Baria Sharma, a type a type two diabetic, for further management of her blood sugar levels. Okay. So in the introduction, we mentioned the name of our patient and her condition. And the purpose of our writing is to further, we need further management of her blood sugar levels. So the purpose is very clear in the introduction. Okay. After that, mm -hmm. okay, let's uh, compare Mrs. this with the, we can start compare. <clears throat> Uh, we mentioned the name and date of birth uh, of here. <clears throat> the purpose here for further management of a sugar level. Okay, after that. Continue, Dr. Anas. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mrs. Sharma was diagnosed with uh... non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. Uh -huh. Non-insulin diabetes. In 1999, mm -hmm. she has been mentioned, mentioned uh, monitoring her blood uh, monitoring her blood pressure and sugar levels at home since then. She has a strong family history of diabetes and it is allergic to penicillin. Her weight is steady, uh, steady, but the mass index of 24 and an eye examination on October, in October uh, 2017 indicates no issues. Okay. So in this letter, we started writing from the beginning, from here. Medical history, 
She was diagnosed with type A with smelitis uh, in 1999. And after that, mentioned that she has been monitoring her uh, blood uh, level, blood pressure, and uh, sugar levels because she was worried. Okay. And after that, she has a strong family history of diabetes and uh, as allergic to penicillin. So this is the family history. And this is the allergy for penicillin without menopause. So till here. And after that, we mentioned that uh, this patient uh, has a body mass index of 24 and eye examination indicated no issues. Okay, this is the body mass index and this is hair check for eye, uh, eye condition. Okay, after that, Dr. Anas. Yeah, she initially presented at 29, 12, uh, 90, 89, concerning that her blood sugar levels were no longer well controlled. Mm -hmm. her blood pressure is at uh, day was uh, 155 on uh, 100, uh -huh. and her reason to, to sugar levels were ranging between 6 and 18 millimoles per liter. Okay. Her medications in use, uh, in, included uh, metformin at 500 milligrams uh, per day, uh, and the glipizide, uh, 5 milligrams uh, twice a day. Good morning. Okay. Mm -hmm. in, uh, instituted, I instituted at. at, at uh -huh. Another at, medication? Uh, uh, four milligram once a day. Ah, oh, okay. So let's compare with. Um, here we mentioned the metformin, glipizide, and the recent blood sugar level from six to eighteen. And on examination, the blood pressure was. Uh, 155 uh, over 100. After that, we added this medication for her treatment. Okay, after that. Uh, pathology report received on 5 1 2019 showed hemoglobin A1C levels of 10% and GFR greater than 16 milliliter per minute. Mm -hmm. Her cholesterol was high, 6.2. So here we mentioned the abnormal uh, results. Mm -hmm. So here we mentioned the glomerular filtration rate, the glygated hemoglobin, and high level of cholesterol. After that, After that, on uh, 12 1 2019, I prescribed Libitor 20 milligram in the mm -hmm. uh, morning, morning. I also increased her metformin regimen. Yes. Uh, regime to 7,050 milligram per day, 750 milligram per day. Since then, her home monitored blood pressure has been within range and her cholesterol has fallen to 3.2 yeah. and non blood why, sugar. That's why uh, I, told, I told you that you have to mention again the uh, improvement of the yeah. Okay, after that? Uh, her non fasting blood sugar are uh, 7 to 8 millimoles per liter, uh -huh. but her fasting blood sugar levels are usually in the 16 range, which is high. Yes. Therefore, I am referring yes. her to you for your specialist advice. Yes. Sincerely. Okay. So here, 
we mentioned the change in uh, hair regimen because we changed the dosage of metformin from 500 to 750. Uh, and hair blood pressure improved. And uh, doctor, I, I, I have a question. Ma, uh -huh. okay. Uh, about uh, abbreviation, you sent us uh, an abbreviation document. It is okay to use all the abbreviation in the letter? Uh, okay, uh, regarding the abbreviations in writing, uh, as long as you are writing to as um, a recipient knows the meaning of the abbreviations you write, is it okay? But to to be more formal, you uh, try to uh, minimize uh, your abbreviations in writing. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and after that, we mentioned the improvement of cholesterol level because the triglyceride and low density li lipoprotein were normal. So there is no importance of uh, mentioning uh, them, but you have to mention the improvement of cholesterol. And of course, this is our reason of writing that the fasting blood sugar usually in high, very high levels, while the non-fasting one uh, within normal. So, okay. So as you see, We didn't mention the address. We didn't mention her children or her marital status, nor the occupation. No significance of mentioning uh, the normal uh, relatives. We just mentioned the importance of family history. No operations. Uh, here, we didn't mention regarding smoking. Uh, as I told you, if you didn't mention uh, that the patient is uh, not smoking or non-smoker, uh, the reader will consider that the patient is non-smoker. Uh, actually, for exercise, you can mention uh, that the patient has a sedentary lifestyle. You can mention uh, that the patient doesn't perform uh, exercises. Uh, no importance to mention that there is no over-the-counter products. Uh, regarding good bit, uh, appetite and good diet, also it's not important. Normal bowels and maturation, not important. Uh, normal physical examination, not important to mention. Uh, the negative signs, not important. And the requested tests not mentioned in your writing because you mentioned here the abnormal tests. The review, uh, not important. Also here, the review, not important. And of course, at the last visit and the previous one also, the improvement of hair, uh, cholesterol, and blood pressure, very important. So this is our uh, case notes after excluding the irrelevant data. So uh, Dr. Ernst, what do you think? Is it important, is it uh, easy to manage uh, selecting the relevant data or irrelevant data in uh, writing, is it easy to you after discussing this uh, letter? Yes, I think uh, it is uh, easy to choose the relevant information. 
you managed you managed your uh, letter uh, very well. So thank you for that. Okay. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, Doctor. Doctor. Uh, Dr. Lina. Going to join? Oh, I'm with you. Uh, Dr. Ernest, could you mute uh, your mic, please? Okay, thank you. Okay, Dr. Uh, Lina. How will you start writing this letter? Where's the pointer? Okay, we will start with the writing task, as you mentioned. Am I right? Because you know, this is the first session I attend today. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, we we'll start with the writing task. Yes, it's correct. Okay, yeah, we'll read the task using the information in the case notes. Write a letter to uh, Miss Abraham, okay? An occupational therapist dealing with Mr. Jones, dealing, detailing, detailing, sorry, Mr. Joe Jones uh, situation and uh, requesting an assessment of his workplace, okay. So the task uh, uh, for the occupational therapist, okay? Mm -hmm. You have to write uh -huh. a letter. For Ms. Graham, an occupational therapist, dealing, sorry, detailing Mr. Jones situation and requesting an assessment of his workplace. Okay. Uh -huh. Address the letter to Ms. Jane mm -hmm. Graham, okay? Uh, New Town Occupational Therapy. 10 um, Johnstone Street, 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 Newtown. Okay. Newtown, okay. After that? After that, uh, you mentioned you will go directly to the patient details. Yes. Patient details. That so the name, the patient name is document. relevant to date of birth. Address is not important to mention. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. After that, what will you do? After that, what we do? But, uh, I didn't get you. What you mean? Sorry. Uh, after reading the your uh, patient details, how will you proceed? Uh huh. I'll proceed for the last visit. Yes, the last visit. Where is the last visit? Uh, the, I think uh, thirteen of uh, August, yes. nineteen. Mm -hmm. Okay. A uh, bag uh, reco uh, recovering well, still in pain. Okay. Bag. Here. Okay. Here. Sorry, because the, the uh, okay, okay. I have some problem Here's with this. Okay. Recovering well, still in pain. Yes. Okay. So I have to mention he's still in pain. Okay. No. Uh, moving. We, sorry. We are not talking about uh, what mention what data will mention or will execute. We just to we want to know the. Uh, current status of our patient. Okay, he's recovering well, still in pain, moving mm -hmm. stiffly, but increased range of movement. Okay, pain increase after 20 to 30 minutes of uh, sitting or lying down. I have to mention all? No, again, still, I'm just telling you sorry. that you are reading the last visit just to know the patient's case and how you will manage the relevant or irrelevant data or case notes in your writing. Because if you uh -huh. started uh, uh, reading these data or this data without knowing the patient's current patient's history or current patient's uh, status, um, you might include lots of data uh, not important. So just read the last visit and the plan. And after that, start reading from the start. OK, I got you. Okay. okay, so now, uh, as we mentioned, so just, we just asking... know that uh, no, uh, that the last visit, uh, his back recovering well, but still in pain, 
moving steadily, but uh, uh, there is limitation of uh, mobility or, mo or motion. Uh, the pain increased after 20 to 30 minutes of sitting or lying down. The physiotherapy still attending appointments to uh, with the physiotherapy um, or physiotherapist. And regarding the exercise, walking 30 minutes per day, uh, tiring, still tiring. The patient board discouraged, want to return to work and restless. And the treatment returned to work if no lifting with regular breaks. Letter to occupational uh, therapist requesting assessment of workplace advice on duties patient can perform. Okay, so by this information, we uh, know that the patient uh, still in pain, but recovering and want to, back, to go back to his uh, work. Uh, and we advised him that to not to lift uh, heavy uh, products and we need to refer uh, to occupational therapy for assessment of workplace and the duties can perform. So let's start selecting the relevant case notes from here. Regarding the address, is it important? Important. Okay, you can exclude the address. What about reason of present for presenting wants to return to work after back injury? Employer supportive. Is it important? Yeah. Yes, of course it's important. Medical history on 19 in 1988, appendix removed. Is it important? Uh -huh. No. No. Social background, married to uh, Susan Jones and has three children. Is it important? No. You can mention just uh, married without the rest. Is it right? Oh. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, work drives forklift in a large warehouse uh, like a big uh, store and requires prolonged sitting and occasional heavy lifting. Is it important? Yeah, it's very important. Yes. The main problem. The nature of his uh, mm. occupation. So you can include data uh, just to uh, advise or to tell uh, the referred doctor occupational uh, to the, sorry, not doctor, uh, Mr. Physiotherapist. Uh, Ms. Ms. Uh, Ms. Graham, yes. To know. Occupational the therapist, his, yeah. uh, Yes. The okay. current medication, naproxen, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, and carisperidol, muscle relaxant, blocks pain. Yeah, it's important to mention. Correct medication. Yes, you can include uh, these. It's okay. Um, but I have one question. Mm -hmm. When I mentioned the current medication should coming in um, like in, um, um, in, not in past perfect, in present perfect, right? Current medication. We are talking about uh, like a habit or effect or I think... Uh, the patient doing uh, is doing it very every day. So why uh, why past perfect? Uh -huh. Perfect. Uh, present simple. Present simple. Okay. He takes he takes uh, naproxen and uh, carisporidol because current medication. Because in the previous uh, scenario, they mean they mentioned that um, his compliance to the to the medication by they said he has been monitoring yes here of course we have to use where is it that's why i was just ah, okay okay no problem mm. 
Yes, she has been monitoring her blood uh, pressure and sugar levels at home since then. What's the tense here? This is the present uh, perfect. No. Mm. Present perfect continuous. Continuous, yeah. Monitoring. Continuous. Mm. Has been present perfect monitoring continuous. Present perfect continuous. This mm. means that this patient started taking or uh, monitoring the blood pressure since a certain date in the past and still now doing this still till now okay so uh -huh. this is an event happened in the past but still in go ongoing okay uh -huh. okay Okay, uh, we arrived for uh, naproxen and carbidazole. Your, uh, you, your question was, uh, we can use present perfect. No, you cannot use- Con perfect. Continuous. Present you can perfect. use continuous. Present perfect, continuous or simple present. Uh-huh, okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. After that, Current uh, condition history. I should read? Yes. Okay, presentation. Hurt bad lifting heavy box off floor at work four days since initial strain. No rest, pain worsening. Okay, so this is the cause of uh, his mm. condition. This is the starting point here. Yeah. Yeah. This is the starting point. Okay, X-ray. Do no, this include this or not? Yeah, of course. Okay. No rest. Pain worsening. Yeah, this is very important. Okay. Then X-ray. No disc problems. Mm -hmm. You will include mm -hmm. this. Mm, yeah. Because I this will th affect their plan? Semi relevant. I see this is mm -hmm. semi relevant because a negative sign or negative result. There is no important thing to, to talk about. I think oh. it's semi relevant. Okay, after that. Uh, diagnosis lower back pain, severe. Mm -hmm. No need. <laughs> Okay. Lower back pain strain. Uh, so the patient has severe uh, back pain. Okay, we have to mention. That. Okay, treatment, exercise, walking daily, gradual increase in time, distance, referral to physio, prescription, naproxen and uh, carisoprodol, 30 mm -hmm. minutes of walk and uh, certificate to give to employer to review in 30 days. Okay. I don't think so. It's just mention. Um, we already um, we mentioned that the, the patient is taking these medications, right? Uh, we can say that um, the, 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 the rest not help him. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So you can exclude these data. Till now, we um, considering that the patient is in pain and he has started uh, exercise. Okay, after that. Okay. After that, in 28, sorry, uh, uh, there's some line. This uh, is. Okay, no matter. Okay, no, no problem. I okay, progress. June. Back uh, still. Still so, so okay. Moving very stiffly, mm -hmm. physio exercise very painful, but patient is compliant. Yeah. 
exercise walking up to 10 minutes per day extended time of walk 30 days again to review in 30 days mm. Mm. i can mention that the that the, the even with bed rest it's not he is not improving i don't know yes as you see here we excluded naproxen in this line and this okay regarding just for to know the 13 days this is the first time to mention that the patient uh, took a vacation for 13 days you will notice that there is a progression or um, like a scenario or a sequence of starting exercising yeah, gradual increase, gradual increase yeah. in time and distance uh -huh, yeah. and refer to physio and took 30 days work off of work and again exercise again and the patient is compliant the walking uh, walking up 10 minutes per day and extended again time here was the first 30 days and again there is a second 30 days after that improving improvement recovering well but still in pain and still moving very stiffly again the physical service attending regular appointments so it's like a repeated data Mm -hmm. repeated data like a sequence with improvement but still in pain improvement but still in pain and uh, frequent appointments with physiotherapists is it right yeah okay and again we increased naproxen dose then again extended the work of work 30 days again and the last visit, recovering well, but still in pain again, moving stiffly again, and uh, the limitation of movement, their uh, improvement, there is improvement in uh, motion or movement. Pain increased after 20 to 30 minutes of sitting or lying down. Okay. Still attending appointments again. Also, it's repeated information. And also the exercise and still tiring or in pain. Last thing, patient poor, discouraged, want to return to work and restless. As you see that these three collections of data, this one and this one, and this one, there is a repetition of data. So you can merge them into uh, sentences, just telling that the patient has started uh, appointments with a physiotherapist and doing exercise every day uh, with improvement, but still in pain. This is the... Uh, summary of these information is it right yeah okay and the last thing that we want to to tell the reader that the patient is uh, want to uh, go back to the work um, and the employer supportive to him um return to work of no lifting and we advised the patient is return to work if no lifting. So we are advising the patient to not to lift heavy objects with regular breaks in between. And we want from the occupational therapist to assess the workplace environment and advise the patient uh, regarding 
uh, his duties, uh, which can be performed daily. So these are the relevant and important case notes. But we can summarize and merge the repeated uh, case notes. So let's start. Okay, uh, Ms. Jane Graham, this is the name of the recipient, and uh, Newtown Occupational Therapy, she works at Newtown Occupational Therapy, and this is the address of her work. And a blank line, then the date of writing, then a blank line. After that, the salutation or greeting, dear, Ms. Graham, we wrote the family name of the recipient and we didn't wrote, uh, sorry, we didn't write the comma here. So there is no comma here, okay? Uh, Dr. Ayumni, hello? Yeah. Okay. Shall I read? Uh, just a moment. After that, the uh, subject regarding Mr. Barry Jones, and this is the date of birth. Okay, this is our start regarding the introduction. Please write the introduction loudly. Shall I read now? Yes. I am writing to request a workplace assessment for the above, uh, for the above patient, Miss Jones. He is... Um, a forklift driver that has been off work for three months after he in injured his bag at work, trying to move a heavy box off floor. Okay. Off the floor. Okay, Miss Jones. Stop here, please. Stop here, please. So we wrote that the purpose of our writing that we are requesting a workplace assessment for this patient. And we included the nature of his occupation that he is a forklift driver, but has been off work for three months after he injured his back at work injury to move a heavy box of the floor. Um, I have one question. Yes. Why we didn't mention he is, uh, sorry, but uh, he's uh, off work. Why he's, we are, sorry, I have some problem with the verb. Why we mentioned but has been off? Uh -huh. uh, has been, what's the tense here, has been? Um, present perfect. Yes, present perfect. And uh, what's the meaning of this sentence with such tense? What's the meaning of this sentence? He is a forklift driver, but has been off work for three months. What's the meaning of this uh, sentence? He's off now since oh, and three months. Ah, He's she... off since, from three months until now. Yes, so this is an action happened in the past and still in relation till now or okay. relevant till okay. now. This is a little bit, a little bit confusing with the uh, present perfect continuous, but the continuous is telling that the, uh, the event is still ongoing. And here, the, also the patient is still ongoing with, her, um, with his vacation, but it's okay to use uh, present, uh, present perfect. Uh-huh. Okay. okay. Because okay. present perfect and present perfect continuous, they are very similar to each other. But the first one, present perfect, it's a tense telling that we are talking about an event happened in the past and maybe just finished or has a relation till now. But the present perfect continuous 
it's a tense used for a ten, uh, an act, an action, uh, an action or event, an event happened in the past and for sure still ongoing. Oh, so it's accepted both. Yes. Okay. Shall I continue? Yes, please. Okay, Miss. Okay, Mr. Jones. Uh, sorry. Uh, has. Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, we again we started. Uh, we included in the introduction that our purpose is to request a workplace assessment for this patient, and this is the nature of his occupation. And we uh, mentioned briefly that he took three months of work because the injury of his, of his uh, back at work while trying to move a heavy box. So let's compare <clears throat> this is the name and this is the, the date of birth. Uh, reason for presenting, okay. This is the occupation of the patient and the cause, the cause of his injury. And we mentioned briefly that the patient took three months of vacation, sorry, not this, this one. So this one and this one and this one. So we mentioned that briefly in the introduction. And the purpose of our writing is requesting assessment of workplace. Okay, continue, Doctor. Hello. I'm so sorry. Well, my mic was mute. Yeah. Mr. Jones has been seeing a physiotherapist for the past three months. Okay. He can infuse. And here's the walk. tense. Uh -huh, sorry. The, here's the tense. Has been seeing. So the meaning of this sentence that the patient has started uh, this action seeing the physiotherapist since three months ago or four mo three months ago and still till now is going for uh, this physiotherapist. Yeah, still happening. Yeah. He currently walks uh, for 30 minutes per day, although he reported that this is quite tiring so he mentioned only the 30 minutes he didn't mention the seconds yes uh, because the, this is the most recent updates for uh, his efforts so why uh, we will mention that he started for five minutes then 10 minutes then 15 minutes no there is no importance uh, or it's not significant to mention that so you can briefly mention that currently he is uh, performing a uh, exercise for uh, 30 minutes. Okay. Okay, very nice. I like the idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Jones has been compliant with his physiotherapy and recovering from his injury as expected. Mm -hmm. He is eager to return to work in some capacity, but still gets some discomfort in his back. Okay. If he, so, uh -huh. shall I continue? Yeah, yeah, please. Okay, some discomfort in his back. If okay. he Stop sits, here, if he sits, okay. Uh -huh. Stop here, please. For prolonged periods, okay. We mentioned that this patient, Mr. Jones, has been compliant with his physiotherapist and is recovering from his injury as expected, and he is eager to return to work in some capacity, but still gets some discomfort in his back and uh, if he sits for a prolonged period. As uh, you see that this is a summary for 
all these points starting from here we mentioned that the patient uh, is performing a 30 minutes exercise so this case note and this case note and this case note and uh, this case note we have four points summarized in one point that the patient is performing uh, exercises for 30 minutes daily so this is the summary of these four points after that we mentioned that the patient is uh, compliant to his physiotherapy or physiotherapist so that means that the patient is still go or is still going to this physiotherapist so here we summarize also these four points in a one point and also um, mentioned that the patient is recovering uh, as expected so um, recovering well but sorry how he predict that sorry Uh, he's he's predicting that he's recovering well or that it was mentioned what's your question here please predicting what there is no prediction he's predicting he's recovered well no he, this is mentioned clearly in the tasks because as you see There is no prediction. You are not allowed to predict in writing. You have to write the same things in uh, case notes. So let's compare. Uh -huh. Starting from here, exercise, walking daily, gradual increase in time and distance. So as long as the patient can perform exercises with increase in time and distance, so increase in his effort. So this is improvement. Again, here, uh, walking up to 10 minutes, then turn to 15 to 20, then up to 30 minutes. So of course, this means that the patient can perform uh, or showing advancement or improvement in his health. Is it right? Hello. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Is it clear? Yeah, doctor. My voice is clear. Uh -huh. Okay. Clear. Uh -huh. And here clearly mentioned that the back recovering well. Yeah, doctor. It's okay. Uh, but yeah. Something. yeah. So we didn't mention any data not mentioned in the tasks. Here, um, the patient is recovering from his injury as expected. And he is eager to return to work in some okay. capacity, but still gets some discomfort in his back if he sits for a long period. So um, here, the patient increased after 30 minutes of sitting or lying down. This is what, what mentioned in the uh, past paragraph. And the patient uh, is bored and want to return to his work. Okay, continue, doctor. Okay, my voice is okay, clear? Yeah, yeah, clear. Okay. Given that he is required to sit for long periods at work, 
and occasionally required to perform heavy lifting. I do not believe I do not believe he is ready, okay, to return to work in his previous capacity, but may return if it can be arranged for him to avoid heavy lifting and take regular breaks. Ms. Jones employers okay, Mrs. Sorry, Mr. John employers is supportive of his return to work. Hmm. Okay. So here, uh, given that he is required to sit for long periods at work and occasionally required to perform heavy lifting. So we are expressing the nature of his work. After that, I don't believe uh, he is ready to return to work in his previous capacity. So also here we are showing that uh, we are afraid uh, uh, from the nature of this hard work and we need the assistant, assist, assistance of or help uh, of uh, you, Ms. Graham. Uh, but may return if it can be arranged for him to avoid heavy lifting and take regular breaks. So this is our advice. Uh, and the last thing we highlighted that uh, Mrs. Uh, Mr. Jones employer is supposed supportive to his return to work. This is also mentioned he support to his return to work. Uh, yeah, uh, it's semi relevant. I think it's relevant to mention or not to mention. Um, I think there is question. Thanks for teaching us such a comprehensive manner, Dr. Sam. Um, thank you, doctors. I think two doctors uh, left. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, doctor. Regarding the last one, uh, just here, the last three or four sentences, we expressing we are expressing that the patient is in a very hard uh, work environment, and we need to uh, assess uh, this uh, environment or evaluate this environment and advise the patient for certain things uh, to manage his uh, condition. And after that, could you read this part? Okay. Um, could you please uh, conduct uh, an evaluation of Mr. John's workplace and provide advice to, to what duties he could perform there consistent with his recovery? Mm -hmm. Please contact me should you require any. To contact me should you require any further information, your center lead doctor. Yes. So here in the conclusion, we mentioned uh, the purpose of our writing that we are uh, seeking your help to evaluate uh, Mr. Jones' workplace and provide advice to what duties he could perform um, and be consistent with his recovery. So I think that uh, purpose is very clear to get the purpose of our writing once you read this conclusion. Is it right? So this is the importance of expressing the importance, the purpose briefly in the introduction and again uh, briefly in the conclusion and summarize briefly the mentioned data in your paragraphs, but don't include in your data in the conclusion. It's a fatal mistake to include new data, no. In the conclusion, you have just to mention the purpose and a brief uh, summary uh, of your writing. Sorry, doctor, but I didn't get they 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 put should in between. Uh, sorry. Could you go please to the previous page? It's here. I don't know. Please contact me. Should. Yeah. You require any if further contact me, should you require uh, any further information? That means that if you want uh, uh, any further uh, information, you can contact me. 
uh, it's correct. What's the problem with that? Please contact me, should. <laughs> it's heavy on my ears. Yes, uh, maybe a little, a little bit confusing. You can do that. It's really difficult to digest. I don't know. Yeah, no problem. You can use a, a simpler or a simplest uh, um, style of writing to close your writing. No problem with that. Thank you. Can write, you. you can write simply write like um, uh, please uh, if you want if you if you require um, any other information please contact me or feel free feel free to contact me if you want uh, any further information so it's very easy to manage or change the style of this uh, sentence okay. so uh, okay what do you think about these um, case notes after uh, excluding and summarizing the repeated uh, case notes? Is it clear and easy to you for uh, expressing these case notes in simpler uh, sentences? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, at first glimpse, once you read this for the first time, you will see that there's a lot of information mentioned and there are um, lots of repetition in the mentioning in data. So you can uh, summarize this repetition in simple um, sentences or compound sentences to express the meaning of this repetition. Okay, doctor, I know. Yeah, this is what I thought. Mm -hmm. Okay, doctors. So, do you have any question before finishing uh, our session today? Because the next session will be for transforming the case notes to complete sentences. <laughs>